All right, this is our, um, our last content video. I'll do an examples video before the test just to kind of get everybody ready. But the last thing we're going to talk about is kind of new. We're going to do rotational kinematics. Um, in addition to learning about how things go in straight lines, we're also going to be constantly talking about objects that are rotating in a circle, spinning objects, wheels, that kind of thing. Um, so with rotational kinematics... I want you to think back to the lab that we did during the first week where we rolled the object and we looked at how far it went with respect to how many rolls it turned through. So, let's say the ball rolls one time. It's delta x is just going to be one circumference. Okay, Let's put this stuff in a table just so we can keep up with it. So... Table is going to have number of rolls for one column. It's going to have the distance that we travel, our displacement in another column, and then the total angle that we rotate through. Um, so for this first one, we have one roll, and the displacement is 2 pi r. Uh, and when we talk about total angle, imagine putting a dot on that wheel, and when it rolls, we just measure with a protractor how much of an angle it turned through. In this case, it's going to be 360 degrees. All right, so that's one time. That's real easy. Uh, two times, let's say if the ball rolls two times, the delta x is two times the circumference. Okay, so let's put that in the table. I'm going to roll two times. Twice the circumference is 4 pi r, and then that's 720 degrees. Um, so... <laughs> That pattern will continue. Let's let's do let's say let's say if the ball rolls half the table halfway around, delta x is going to be one half of the circumference. So number of rolls is going to be one half. The displacement is going to be half the circumference. So that's just pi r. And that total angle is 180 degrees. Still a very simple pattern to look at. So, if the ball rolls a quarter of the way around, no, one-sixth, one-sixth of the way around, delta x is going to be one-sixth of the circumference, and we'll just kind of work this out a little bit. That's one-sixth times two pi r. One-sixth times two is two-thirds. Sorry, one-sixth times two is one-third. So, 1 sixth pi over 3 times the radius, or, or a sixth of our circumference is how far we've gone. And that angle is 60 degrees. If you take your 360 and divide it by 6, that's how you get it. So what we're going to do now is look at a pattern. Um, it's a little tough to see. So just looking at that table right now, the pattern may be there if you're really good at maybe converting angles, uh, but what we need to do is look at that angle in radians. We're going to notice something pretty cool. I think it's cool, but I'm a physics teacher. So, 360 degrees in radians is 2 pi radians. 720 degrees in radians is 4 pi radians. 180 degrees is pi radians. Oh, I made a mistake there. 180 degrees One hundred eighty degrees is pi radians. Sorry about that. And then sixty degrees is pi over three radians. So if we look at that, for a rolling object, its displacement, the linear displacement, the delta x, It depends on the angle that we roll through. As long as that angle is measured in radians, it's really easy to see. And our little equation that would tell us what's going on there, we've got delta x equals r, the radius, and you see all that there, times theta. Delta x is our linear displacement. 
r is our radius, and theta is the angle, the angular displacement is what we call it. It's how much of an angle we turn through, and with that it really, really, really needs to be measured in radians. But it's, but it's how much rotation we had. So, that's how we're going to link those two. So this is for any wheel rolling along the ground. And so let's look at what we can do starting with that. So, and you're going to notice we do this a lot. We're going to have a list of linear quantities and a list of angular quantities. So our linear quantities, we've got displacement, and we've been talking about that. We have velocity, and we have acceleration. The angle, okay, so displacement is x, velocity is v, acceleration is a. Our angular quantities, we have angular displacement, angular velocity, and angular acceleration. Now the deal with this, we're not very creative with names here. So angular displacement we use a theta 4. Angular velocity we use a lowercase omega. It looks like a W but it's really curvy. These are all going to be Greek symbols. Theta for the angle and it's what we've been using for angles so far to kind of get us ready for that. Omega for angular velocity, and then angular acceleration is an alpha. It's the one that's easiest to get confused with regular acceleration, I know. So, when we talk about displacement, it is change in position with just change in position. Angular displacement is change in angle. And when we're going back and forth between the two, x is equal to r theta. And we just looked at that. That's how we move from one to another. That's how if we ro rolled a ball down the street. We would notice that relationship. Uh, that relationship is what you graphed back with that lab we did at the beginning of the year. Velocity is change in position with respect to time. Velocity is delta x over t. So angular velocity is change in angle with respect to time. So with that, omega is delta theta over time. Notice that omega and theta share the same relationship that v and x do. They change with each other in the same way. And just like going back and forth between position and angular displacement, you can go back and forth between velocity and angular velocity. Regular velocity is angular velocity times r. V equals r omega. Acceleration is change in velocity with respect to time. So a is equal to delta v over t. Angular acceleration is change in omega, change in angular velocity, with respect to time. I'll just abbreviate that. So alpha is going to be delta omega over t. And again, we can go back and forth between acceleration and angular acceleration the same way. Regular acceleration is r times the angular acceleration. And to be clear, that r, as long as it's a radius, we'll keep it capital to match up with everything else. So, um, another thing we need to look at with this is units. Angular displacement is in units of radians. We already talked about that. So, angular velocity is going to be in radians per second. Angular acceleration is going to be in radians per second squared. And we'll go through some examples in class that, that make a little bit more sense with all of this. 
so when we talked about our linear quantities, we had three equations that really kind of described how velocity, acceleration, time, and position all worked out with respect to each other. Those are those three. And I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, write those three down again. Never hurts. But those things, velocity, acceleration, time, and delta x, share the same qualities with each other that the angular velocity, angular displacement, and angular acceleration share with each other. So we can rewrite each one of our linear uh, kinematic equations for rotational kinematics. Apologies. So omega is omega zero plus at. Omega squared is omega zero squared plus two alpha theta. And delta theta is omega zero t plus one half at squared. And they all work the exact same way that the other ones work. And what we'll be doing is practicing using these as well as using those linear quantities.